Is it recording? I don't know. That may be recording. I hope it is. Why don't we go ahead and pray it? And then we'll talk about the lab we're going to do today. Uh, and uh, I'll pass, but before we do that, I'll pass back your quiz you had on labs one through five. We have another quiz, I think, on six through. Oh, what? But, um, yeah, we'll talk about that. Scores were really great. I had an issue with some of the questions. And I did something I was told not to do, but, but I did it. Is I added two points to each person's score because some of the questions I thought people could be misunderstood and this other one could be a very acceptable answer. A little ambiguous, a couple of the questions. So, uh, but you, I'll pass it back and you can, let's say you got 82%. That's 18 points you missed. So how many points could you make up by correcting it? If you missed 18 points? Nine. Nine. And 982 is 91, so you can bring it up to an A by doing correctly. But corrections need to not just say, well, this is the correct answer. You do explain. So like, even if you miss some from the diagram of the microscope, and let's say you miss, you call something I don't know, the wrong name, objectively instead of the eyepiece, you got them switched. Just explain, well, this should have been eyepiece, should have been objective lens. The eyepiece is what you look at. The objective lens the, is the lens that's closer to the object you're viewing. The product of the two gives you the magnification. So if you missed question two, which had to do with um, the total magnification, you need to explain that when you, and then show your work. So what I mean is explain and show the work if you want me to give you half the points back that you missed, all right? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this class. It's students who really obviously care about uh, learning, and, and I pray that this would be a profitable time as we talk about the quiz we just had, and so students understand anything that they missed uh, from before. And uh, pray that the lab we have today will help each of us to understand better some differences between animal and plant cells, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Okay, um, so let me go ahead and call your name. You can come up. Let's see what's this. Yeah, the next test we'll have a quiz on labs six through ten. Then we'll have a quiz on labs eleven through seventeen, and then eighteen to twenty-one, and then twenty-two to twenty-five. So we're going to keep on doing that. Uh, I already have those ready. So uh, Gracie. And Eliza. Okay. And uh, Hannah. And uh, I couldn't read this. Oh, <laughs> Is that yours? Yeah. <laughs> I could not. Please print your name carefully. You're welcome. Uh, Aaron's not here. I'm not sure if I start. I'm not sure how to tell the record, but it looks like it is because it says green. I yeah. push the button in the back. So how do you tell the record? It is recording. So there's a red record button on the top here that'll uh, on the screen here. Oh, okay. Um, and, but you are Kennedy, right? Uh, Wilson is around here. And hi. Okay. Now, um, wow, there is a beater. So there were 28 points possible on this. If you look at all the points possible. The first part, identifying the parts, is just straight memorization. You need to really be familiar with telescopes and all the parts to it. So uh, that's all there is to that. Um, The next part, question two, says calculate the, the missing information in the chart. The ocular lens is called the eyepiece. Nobody calls it ocular lens, but anyway. You got the eyepiece. And what anybody tell me what do you call the, the lens that's closer to the object you're viewing? You mean the objective lenses? Yes. I need to be for that. It's an objective lens. Now, let's 
take a look at the first one. Is hand and four. This has power of it. They do X after me, and that's the magnification. This will mag that piece will magnify it ten times. For the first one, the objective is four times. So the, the total magnification would be what? How do you figure that out? You multiply it. Yes. This multiplies it ten times. That takes the energy multiplied ten times and multiplies it four more times. So it's a total of four times ten. Four times ten equals forty. And the x means power. The magnification. You didn't have to write that down, so you should have gotten 40. Now in the second one, they said 5 and then 200 here. So you're asking yourself, 5 times what is going to be 200? 40. 40. So then you'll put in 40 here. And that's all there is to doing these. That's how magnification of the microscope or telescope works. You got your eyepiece and your objective lens. The telescope the same way, you got your eyepiece and you got the, the refractor objective lens. If you use uh, mirrors, it reflects in and the mirror is con uh, concave uh, and it magnifies based on the degree of concaveness. Okay. Just like so, convex is like this. Right. Convex would be like this. If this was your mirror, if it was like this. But in a telescope, it's like this. So it's concave. And light comes in. It's not important. I'm just saying telescopes work the same way. They magnify based on the product of the, the eyepiece. But here's what happens. This one magnified 40 times, this 200 times. So you took the light here, this one, and you spread it out to cover 40 times, you magnify 40 times, so the light is spread out 40 times. So you need more light, or it'll be too dark. Here, the light that came in is now spread out 200 times. So this second image is going to appear darker. You need more light. Now, the other thing is, uh, I turned in a microscope that had a problem with the not, the uh, uh, light not working. And what you were telling me to do is if you just stick uh, your cell phone, turn that mm -hmm. up. Yeah. If you take your LED light on your phone and you stick it under the lens, it should actually light up your microscope really well. So. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like that. You stick it underneath, right? Yeah, underneath the lens. Just so guys, here's your platform, and here's the lens that's put, but it's not working right. If you just stick this underneath it, it'll light it up. Yes. So, uh, and we've all used it for, tel for flashlights before. So if you have that microscope, that's what you'll do. Um, maybe you can try to figure out how to not make it too bright if it's not much magnification. None of us have it, so we're not allowed to well, we can go get them. Oh, you, one of you from your group that has that will have to go get your phone. Just explain, you know, when, when it comes to that. Okay, but let's continue to talk about the test. Um, question three was one of the questions I thought wasn't really clear. But in the scientific method, it said, which the phone is not part of the scientific method? And uh, that's an introduction. Because eventually, using the scientific method, what's, what's the hypothesis becomes the theory. As if, you know, somebody spe speculates that this may be what's happening, and over time, when they do experiments, it seems everything seems to, most of the stuff seems to support that hypothesis, eventually it becomes a theory. So, uh, but we know that experimentation is testing your hypothesis, you have to have an hypothesis. You don't really need an introduction. In your lab write-up, we do have a section called introduction. That probably threw you off. But you don't really have it as part of the scientific method. Okay? Um, proper care. Now, carrying the microscope by the arm is not proper care. You always put your hand under the base. That's why that didn't work. Some of you may be confused on that. Um, it says using this paper to clean the stage before use. No. They didn't talk about that as being necessary. Taking the microscope apart 
for thorough cleaning. No. Proper care is just carrying it properly uh, and always turn it to the lowest pallet, which is leaves it as far as distance from the stage so that you know it doesn't bump it. So not maybe not the best question. Uh, and then on the back side, any questions on what uh, prop questions five through eight? Yes. Um, this refers to storing the microscope. Say what? This um, goes to the question about storing the microscope. Should we also lower the stage before we store it? Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, no, the main thing, you don't need to worry about that, I think. Because you're always going to start off using the lowest power and focus it there to make sure you have what you're looking at in the center of the field of view. So that when you go to a higher power, it'll still be within the frame of view. Uh, if that makes sense. So, um, but don't take it apart, please, the thoroughly clean. Let's not do that. So, um, question five, I thought B was a little unclear. Use the course adjustment valve for fine, sharp focusing. Well, obviously, the course knob, which is for the, the course adjustment, fine uses, there's a fine knob. Sometimes one of the scopes is the same. There's a bigger one and a smaller one, right? But um, so I don't know if there's any more questions. Uh, question ten finally was one that I thought was poorly written. But scientific drawings need to have a title and capital letters above the drawing. Whenever you do a drawing, please above it or underneath it, but have what's what are you calling this thing? Give it a title, a name, or a description, you know, of what you're doing there. Um, everything in the drawing must be labeled. What they suggested in your lab map is, is that have arrows pointing to different things. That if you see the cell wall in the plant, you have a little arrow just a second. You got a question? Or, okay, just okay. A second. Sorry. So I have an arrow point to it, but don't have your lines cross. That's kind of bad. It gets confusing. Question? Um, so on number six, um, where it says, like, what's the primary reason the voice lines from uh, the sides? Um, and the correct answer is the board fingerprints. Right. And, um, the board information, so the same thing. That's why I gave everybody two points added on to the quiz. Oh, okay. So I'm giving you credit for that because I, I thought that wasn't clear as well as number 10. Maybe it wasn't as clear. Um, but you're right. But they specifically mentioned about when you in your lab map you're holding the size to avoid fingerprints. That would cause it. They specifically mentioned it. So I would suggest before future go back and review each one of the labs you did and read them carefully before your quiz coming up. And that'll make sure you those kind of questions will be clear. Um, and you should indicate to the right of your drawing the power that you use. This is what it looks like when you use 40 power. We know, I think in all your microscopes, you have 40, 100, and then 400. So indicate the power you looked at it. It's a good thing. Okay. By the way, finally, the extra credit chemical formula for photosynthesis. Uh, I'll put this up here again. You don't need to know how to balance the ways of outcome chemistry. So the basic idea is you have carbon dioxide plus water. Water vapor settles onto the leaves. There's carbon dioxide in the air. Because of the chlorophyll and the chloroplast, energy from the sun enables this to, to form sugar and there's plus oxygen. Now, to be balanced, the number of carbon atoms on both sides need to be the same. It's not. The number of hydrogen atoms on each side is the same. The number of oxygen. So it turns out to balance this. And again, this is just so you know correctly, this is the way it ends up balancing. That balance, it turns out all six is balancing. It. It's not important. The key thing you need to know is carbon dioxide plus water with the sun's energy working through the chlorophyll forms sugar, that's glucose, plus oxygen. And that's uh, photosynthesis. So that's what you should know. This is carbon dioxide and water. This is sugar or glucose. And then oxygen. 
Now, there's other sugars that can be formed here besides just glucose, but we keep it simple. So, all right. Um, any questions on that? Okay. So if you prep those, and next week, uh, I think it's two weeks from now, is that when we have your testing? Is it next week? I'm pretty sure it's next week. Okay. If it's next week, uh, where's my... Look at my notes. Okay, we need to talk about this lab we're doing today first, but... No lab class next week due to ITED testing. So, on week nine, your group will present a three to four minute oral lab report. Okay? I'm going to explain that a little bit before you do the lab because we need to make sure you know how to do this. You have, that means you have two weeks before you have to do your lab report. And so you'll have groups. So I think what we need is one person in this group is going to go back there so that we have three and three. Well, car, 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 car. Which, yeah, but then these are just two. So we don't have four. All right, that'll work. That'll work fine. That's what you done. Okay, guys. So because of the testing next week in, in biology, they don't have any lab class. Uh, for your corrections to the test you just got, the quiz you just got back, you need to email it to me by midnight, they say, Monday night. Okay? to be considered on time, because I won't see you. And then I will look at those and give you additional points. I don't know that I'm going to print them all out, because I don't have that much paper, we'll see. But I'll, I will make corrections. If I don't print them out, I'll notice you the paper that I give each one, I'll show you the, I'll explain what I give you credit for. So, um, now, what we're going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to designate for each group. I'm going to do that right now. One lab recorder will be the recorder who will take notes and record the results. This is again a group lab, group writer. So here's for this group. Okay. And if you guys want to stay for this, there's a paper over there, but it came this way. Uh, let's just stay in your seats because I have to explain a little bit first. And here's for your group. Okay, now, here, very attention. I, one person is going to be the recorder, one person is going to read the lab directions, okay? And one person is going to be the scribe. He's going to take, draw pictures. If you only have two people, the person who, um, the scribe can also complete the drawings. So the scribe is the person who will take notes and record what happens in the lab. But that person will also, I guess, draw pictures. And the other person will actually read and then read the lab directions. Now, so I'm going to specify one person for each group. So, is there one of you who would... She's not going to Okay, so who wants to be the scribe? The video? Okay, so you're going to be, would you be the scribe then? The one who takes notes of what's happening and then writes it down? Okay, good. Now, let me go to this group. So one person needs to be, take notes of what's happening and goes drawing pictures. And you'll be that, so then you'll be doing the, okay, good. Okay, so this group, who's going to draw pictures? So then you're scribe, you're going to write down what's happening so carefully. So you're okay. Now, okay, if I had everybody's attention, let me, let me explain. Okay, what you're going to be doing in two weeks. So you can, you might want to exchange phone numbers with each other so you can text or talk each, with each other over the next couple of weeks so that you're ready in two weeks to do the presentation. You will present your microscope drawings to the class. Explain each drawing. Okay? So if you want them big enough that everybody can see them. You can explain what you saw. Um, 
The drawing, the drawing should be done on poster board and large enough for the class to see. I'm not, it's like a group project, okay? So, you know, whoever's doing that, that's what they're doing. They're just focused on making the drawings clear enough for the class. Uh, you'll present your Venn diagram or similar graph chart comparing plant and animal cells. This visual should be done on poster board and be larger for the class to see. So that's the person taking, yes? I'm sorry. Um, so, since we're working to like together, um, when we're working on it, uh, would, it, would it be okay if we did it on a Google Drive and like get a power presentation? Like yes. One of us got our computers in and then we represent it like on the table. Wait, yeah, so. Or that. Um, okay, here's a Venn diagram. This is comparing an apple and a tomato. They're both fruits, they're both brown, they're both smooth skin. Apples have a white flesh the inside, and they're firm and they're sweet. Tomatoes have a red flesh on the inside, right? And they're mushy and say that they're not sweet, right? That's a Venn diagram, okay? You're going to be doing a Venn diagram comparing animal cells and plant cells. The part in the middle is the thing which is common for both. Things unique to animals or plants are going to be over here. That's what a Venn diagram is, okay? Is that clear? That's what they mean by a Venn diagram. Okay, so are we videoing our presentation and then we should be in the class? Okay, uh, no, that is that you're going to be talking to the class. If you want to video it, um, let me see if they... How many would prefer to videotape it and then show it that way to the class? Because I wasn't... The plan was not that. The plan was that you get up and explain to the class. Okay, I was just, yeah, because wouldn't we all be, like, in different places? Like, so we'd all be, like, just going in the class? Yes, but you'll have a chart. Let's say you did the Venn diagram, because you did the different. you get up, when it comes time to do the Venn diagram, you will explain what's common with both, okay? Now, class, when you communicate to other people in your group, Here's what I did with my Venn diagram. Here's what I saw was common to both animal and plant cells. Here's plant cells, here's what's unique, here's animal cells, what's unique. Make sure that the other people in your group agree because it's a group project, okay? Is it okay if we want to trade places with somebody because we're better at working for, with that? Like, if I want to draw the pictures because I'm better at drawing than he is, would that be okay to do? Uh, well, well, then what, is you, what, is, what are you doing? I'll just do it. You can switch places, that's okay. As long as that'll be alright. Now, guys, turn in your books to, let's see. This is the lab seven that starts on page 30. You're going to turn in your books to page 34. You see the Venn diagram we were just talking about. Similar to both, plant is different. So what's only found in animal cells, only found in plant cells. Now, question seven. Question six says, how does the structure and makeup of the cell wall make it retain its structure even when no longer living? Does this also apply to the cell membrane of an animal cell? No, it doesn't. Question seven says, give some possible reasons why, based on the characteristics and needs of animals versus plants, the structure of the plant cell would need to differ from the structure of the animal cell. Okay. You are going to uh, give a brief answer to question seven as part of your presentation. Be sure that you do that. So you're going to have a Venn diagram showing it. You as a group are going to give a brief explanation of question seven about why plant animal structures you expect them to be different. Remember, what do we call the different kinds of, what's called an autotroph? What's that referred to? You guys have had all your bottles in it? Yeah, plants because they generate food. Okay, what are they called if you're not? Generating your, what? Heterotroph, okay? Meaning animals 
eat the plants, that's how they get the energy that was generated by the plant. Or you eat other animals that ate the plants to get that energy. We don't use photosynthesis out in the sun to generate energy in our bodies. We get it from eating other plants that did that. So, um, all group members must speak at some point during your presentation. So you guys talk about how you want to do that. Over the, you know, that's why we say exchange phone numbers and talk about how you want to do that. You may even want to, if there's some place that you can actually meet, like there's a, a Cheeky's, the restaurant near us, that's actually people can go and sit outside and talk. So maybe you don't want to get together. Or what's the place that we Panera Bread. Panera Bread. Maybe you want to get together sometime and, and talk it out. That would be perfectly fine. It's up to you guys to plan that out. But everybody has to share something during it. Now, uh, your group will submit one written lab report following the lab format you're supposed to do for all of you guys, okay? A joint one, please? Yes, a joint, but it'll be one. In other words, each one of you does not have to do it. One lab report for your group. Be sure to put the names of everybody in your group at the top, okay? Um, your lab report conclusion that you write up and turn in, must include answers to questions 3, 4, 6, and 7. So you don't have to have your answer to 5 because that's the Venn diagram. But in your presentation, you're going to show the Venn diagram and you're also going to talk about 7. Why plant and animal cells need to be different in two weeks, okay? Now, the class page, let me show you that. Let's see. Uh, I'll log back in again and I'll show you the class page. Where is it? It's right. Um, I'm going to say changes before I leave. Okay. Now, this is your class page. If you notice what I did, uh, week six, well, week four, uh, link to group project rubrics and partner participant rubric I showed in class. And uh, it says put a link to the lab report format PDF on your class page. And I did, but I don't see it. So I think, oh, there it is. Link to the lab report format PDF. It's up here. You see that? That's what was just passed out, but just so you have, everybody has a link to it. And here's the two links we added this week that, that uh, you will have to help you out. So that's, that's online that you can look up. Um, so after your presentation two weeks, your group will submit one written lab report on seven, uh, following the lab report format you know, that we've been using. That's for all three of the members or two of the members of your group. Uh, and I think each group member must complete the part of participation rubrics are submitted to the teacher in class on week nine. So that Okay, part of participation rubric. That's this set. And that's available online, you can print that out. But you can say yourself and your partners and who you feel did participate. So each one's going to do that. You're going to fill this out. You're going to do how you think you did in each of these areas, just to try to be honest about that. Um, And then you're going to look over the group project rubrics. Did the project have guys? You're going to answer these questions. You're going to number them down here and put your name on that. So each each group member is going to do that. Okay. Um, 
Now, we're going to watch this Technicom video called The Differences Between Plant and Animal Cells. And I know I have that here somewhere, but I'll find it. Yes.
which is the energy currency of the cell that is used to perform functions necessary for life. Both rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum help with the production and storage of proteins. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is covered in ribosomes, which translate RNA into protein. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum makes lipids. The Golgi apparatus modifies proteins. Okay, the only difference between the smooth, the rough, is the rough has these little ribosomes all over them. Pumps all over them. And they tend to be right around the nucleus. Because that's where the ribosomes are created, and as they travel to the membrane of the nucleus, to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, as it travels through, the whole process of creating, of beginning to create a uh, protein is started. Peroxisomes metabolize waste. Now let's get to the differences between plant and animal cells. One major difference is that plant cells have a rigid cell wall around their plasma membrane. It is composed of cellulose, providing additional stability and protection. As a result, plant cells have fixed angular shapes, while animal cells are mostly round and irregular. Another important difference between animals and plants is how they obtain their energy. Plants are autotrophs, which means that they produce their own food. Meanwhile, animals are heterotrophs, meaning that they must ingest their food. Plants produce sugars through photosynthesis, and then break down the sugar to produce energy. Animals consume other organisms such as plants to obtain sugar, which they then also break down to produce energy. Plants are autotrophs thanks to special so organisms like chlorophyll, right? which are full of chlorophyll, a green pigment that captures light energy to drive the reactions in photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants use the sun's energy to make sugar. Once the sugar is made, it gets broken down in mitochondria. Another important difference between plant and animal cells is in their vacuoles. Vacuoles in plant cells can occupy up to 90% of the cell's volume and have a single membrane. One of their roles is simply to fill up space, but they can also have digestive functions similar to lysosomes. Vacuoles have enzymes that perform many functions and can store nutrients or provide space to degrade waste substances. Animal large cells vacuoles. can also have vacuoles, but they are much smaller than the large central vacuole in plant cells. There are multiple of them, and they don't take up 90% of the space. Plant and animal cells both also have cytoskeletons which feature microtubules, intermediate filaments, and microfilaments. However, these structures are arranged differently in plant and animal cells. Centrioles are present in all animal cells, but are only present in lower plant forms, such as Clinidomonas. Centrioles are microtubule organizing centers, which are structures from which microtubules emerge. Plants don't have centrioles, but instead have many small nucleation sites. In plants, only reproductive cells, known as gametes, can have flagella, such as the sperm of bryophytes. Some animal cells also have flagella. In humans, sperm are the only cells with flagella. However, many animal cells have cilia, unlike most plant cells. For example, we have cilia in our respiratory system to help move debris and mucus, in the female reproductive system to help sperm move towards the egg, and elsewhere. Animal cells have clearly defined lysosomes, However, it's still debated whether some plant cells have them. Lysosomes are membrane-bound spherical vesicles containing hydrolytic enzymes that can break down biomolecules. They are involved in cell processes like secretion, plasma membrane repair, cell signaling, and energy metabolism. Plant cells also have plasmodesmata, which are channels that connect two plant cells. An analogous structure in animal cells is the gap junction which connects the cytoplasm of two adjacent cells. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. You can also support me by following the link to my Patreon. If you... All right, that's a whole lot of details. I know in a short place, but um, hopefully that helps to see some of the differences between plants and animal cells. So you see there, uh, just remember that plants do photo, through photosynthesis, where they get energy from the sun, what enables them to use energy from the sun for part of the plant? The chlorophyll. They produce glucose and oxygen. The glucose in the mitochondria of the plant and in animals that eat the plants, in the mitochondria, this glucose is converted to what's called ATP. It's a smaller form of storing energy. So whether it's glucose 
or a carbohydrate or whatever, it can be converted in mitochondria to form ATP, which is the way that they store energy. And I'm sure in your biology class you've been learning about that about now. You, how many of you already in your biology books have talked about the semi-permeable membrane, the, the cellular membrane, and how it allows things to go through the... Um, you should have already talked about that protein channel, etc. Pardon? So that's kind of where most people are. I also work for organizations that have tutors, that people that have some biology students come in and they've been talking about the semi-permeable membrane. So I know most people are there. Uh, so anyway, that's what we're going to be looking at today. So uh, any questions about what you're supposed to be doing? I would say take really good notes now. And if you look at what you're doing, uh, we're going to be comparing animal cells to plant cells. The plant cell we're going to be looking at again is scraping a potato and getting that on. Now, most of you found that when you added the drop of the, uh, I'm not sure what dye you added to it, it was too hard to see. So maybe put it aside and take a uh, toothpick and just put a little bit and stir it around a little bit so you don't have too much dye. They have, in each one of your kits here, you have your slides, uh, but you're going to have something like this that says, Cock swabs, dialysis tubing, rubber bands, toothpicks. The toothpicks are these plastic things. So you can use those if you want, but I provide another toothpick you can use. But the cock swab should be there. Um, and uh, some of you, it's in the little, it's not wrapped up in a little container like that, but you can find the cock swab down in the bottom of it somewhere. But you all have it. I checked them every one of you have the bottom and the toothpicks. So uh, that's all there is to it. Now, um, I'm going to use a drop of methylene blue when you look at the animal cells, okay? That's also in your in your kit. So each one of you grab one of these and this goes back and get that thing. And um, go ahead and get your microscopes out and not carry it. And if you have to get one that does it, the light's not working. Uh, Mrs. Tori is ordered new balls for it. 